Welcome to the fourth training video in the series Raw Development with Sigma Photo Pro. In this video I will describe through the use of examples the processes behind the development of a raw file as a black and white image within SPP. This video assumes familiarity with the development of a color image within SPP. In the first three videos I explained many times that the aim when developing a raw X3F file is not necessarily to produce the final image but rather the best possible intermediate for further processing. However, when it comes to working with black and white images, it is possible to arrive at the desired end result within SPP, assuming, of course, that no local corrections are required. The desired X3F file is opened in the monochrome working area for the first time via a right click on an image and choosing the command Review Images Monochrome. After the image has opened, one needs to wait a couple of seconds for the last settings to be applied to the image. If I already know, however, that these settings are not going to be correct, then before this calculation is finished, the tonal adjustments, color mixer and toning adjustment can be reset with a click. In addition, I check that the film grain and shading effect are turned off and, finally, that the luminance noise reduction slider is set to the left. Furthermore, if active, that the detail slider should be set in the center. When the settings have been applied, just like with the development of a color image, I stop and ask myself, how does the image look? What, if any, are the problems? And most importantly, where do I want to finish with this image? Having a clear concept at the onset can be extremely useful. With this particular image, I want a cool, clean, contrast-rich finish which will really bring out the details. Just as with a color image, the first changes are made with the tonal adjustment panel. Here the exposure, contrast and fill light are adjusted to increase the overall contrast and to give a good spread of tonal ranges in the histogram. As you are already aware, the fill light not only lightens the shadows, but also increases micro contrast, which, for this image, is something I want. Often luminance noise within a black and white image is something that is desired and is even something that is added to an image in order to simulate film grain, as with this slider here, but more about that later. For that reason, more drastic displacement of the tonal adjustment sliders can be tolerated and this can lead to some interesting artistic results. A quick look at 100% is still worthwhile just to check the effect is as desired. Of course, this is important to remember, as one engages in so-called pixel peeping at 100% zoom, that this has very little to do with how an image will look when reproduced as a true photograph or print. The color mix I will look at in more detail using another example later, since this particular example, even as a color image, is relatively neutral, and as such, changes have here relatively little effect. Since I am also looking for a very clean image to enhance the detail, I will not add any film grain. And also to maximize the detail, I will leave the luminous noise reduction slide on the left. For this image, adding a shadow at the edges, so-called vignetting, does not fit the image, and so it will also not be added. A small point to remember is that a black and white image in SPP is still an RGB rather than a grayscale image. This means that it is quite possible to add a light colour tone to the image. With the toning adjustment, I want to add a slightly cool tone. I can choose different tone combinations as a start point from the menu. These include red, warm tone, sepia, green, blue-green, blue, cold tone, blue-purple and purple. Black and white is the setting to return to the neutral image. The corresponding combinations from each of the color channels will be shown and the white point moved to the appropriate position on the diagram. I can also choose a new position by clicking and dragging the white point or by using the keyboard arrow keys. In both these cases the menu changes to manual. A subtle 3C, that is 3 points of cyan, is something I like for this image. A view of the image at 100% shows that the image is good enough to move the detail slider once in the direction crispy. When the calculation is complete, it is easy to wonder at the detail in the image. This is when you remember why you bought a Sigma camera. The Foveon sensor is just superb. Now to save the image. 
Here with the original size and a 16-bit TIFF. The colour space doesn't really matter since there are no saturated colours in the image and even sRGB is quite OK. This particular image has already been worked on and saved as a colour image which is why the adjustment mode is active. If I was to leave the setting on G1 then the saved setting from the work on the colour image would be overwritten. If as here I choose G2 then they are saved separately. With this next image from Paris I can show the effect of the colour mixer since the colour version has a blue sky and a yellow building and this combination is very suitable to demonstrate the effect. Since every pixel of a Fovian sensor actually registers every colour, it is possible to regulate and remix each colour channel of each individual pixel and this is what the colour mixer does. A black and white image is the sum of the luminance of the individual colour channels. The consequence of this is that by moving the colour mixer the relative luminance of different parts of the image can be changed depending on the mixtures of colours present. The same effect could be achieved in analogue black and white photography by placing coloured filters in front of the lens. A crude rule for the colour mixer is the same colour in the image will be lightened and the opposite colour darkened. For example, just as with the red filter, if I move the colour mixer in the red direction, the brown yellow building will be lightened and the blue sky will become darker, will show more contrast and the clouds will be more visible. If I move the controller in the blue direction, the opposite happens. The sky is lightened and the building becomes darker. And with this particular image in the direction green, then both building and sky become more balanced. Here is a third image, Ennis in Paris. With this image I have used a very contrasty workflow and I have set the colour mixer as if I had used an orange filter. Now I want to add a certain film-like effect to the image and this is where film grain and shadowing come to play. With the film grain it is possible to affect both the grain size and the roughness of the grains. A 50% view gives a good feel for the final result and is definitely recommended to judge the effect of the grain roughness. With these settings the grain is present but not overwhelming. Now the shadowing. Here both radius and amount can be adjusted. The smaller the radius the more vignetting is visible and if I move the amount slider to the right, the strength of the effect is increased, which is what I want. Thank you, and good luck with your Sigma camera and SPP.